knowing your vulnerabilities, able to yield before it is breaking down. So that is the whole idea of Tai Chi. Hello, and welcome to Doc Working, the Whole Physician Podcast. I'm Jill Farmer, lead coach at Doc Working and one of the co hosts of the podcast. We're brought to you by Doc Working Thrive. Find out more at docworking.com. And today I'm really excited to be joined by Dr. Zabin Guo. He is going to share some new insights, something that we haven't talked about yet on the podcast, and it's Tai Chi and how it can impact your ability to be healthy and whole as a physician, which is one of the things we love to talk about here. Dr. Zabin Guo is a professor of medical anthropology at the University of Tennessee Chattanooga and a Tai Chi master. He specializes in the applied medical anthropology with a focus on applying traditional healing knowledge to develop intervention programs to promote physical and psychological well-being among vulnerable populations. And along that line, he developed a form of wheelchair Tai Chi, a program that's used with healing martial arts that is accessible to people with ambulatory limitations. And it integrates wheelchair motions with the flowing movements of Tai Chi to transform a wheelchair from an assisted device to a tool of empowerment. And from there, since 2016, funded by the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, Dr. Guo has been implementing the Adaptive Tai Chi for Veterans program across the country. And they have provided training to over 600 VA healthcare providers at more than 80 VA centers across the country. So thanks for being with us, Dr. Guo. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. So let's talk a little bit about your own history and how, as a medical anthropologist, you came to do the work that you're doing. What led you on this journey to where you are today? Thank you. You know, I started martial arts training when I was young, and I began to really fascinate it with the whole idea of internal martial arts, which means that uh, how are you able to use your opponent's power against your opponents, right? And how do you become part of the forces of your opponents? And so you're able to redirect them, which is the principle of Tai Chi and called internal martial arts. I did not really begin to appreciate that kind of cultural wisdom until I began to study anthropology. And the cultural anthropology or medical anthropology in specific, that how those traditional cultural wisdoms, ideas that developed through our adaptation to our environment, right? And those wisdoms help us to overcome and overcome modern challenges. You know, martial arts is supposed to be, you know, used in the battlefield, right? And defending yourself or fighting your enemies. Of course, you know, today's society, we no longer practice martial arts just for that reason. And oftentimes is really try to overcome our own enemy within. And that is when I began to fascinate it with the idea the power of perceptions and the power of cultural wisdoms will help us to deal with the modern challenges. So that is when I began to really kind of try to apply those Asian wisdom, Tai Chi idea, and make them become more relevant to today's life. And so specifically, a lot of the work, as folks heard in the bio, which I think is fascinating and inspirational that you've done recently is with veterans and using adaptive Tai Chi. Talk a little bit about why Tai Chi is such a good match for that population in our country. Well, you know, Tai Chi is a very, very, very interesting form of body movement. It is gentle. It is circular. It is graceful. But most importantly is that all those body movements have some kind of implication in terms of dealing, in terms of engaging, and engaging with external powers. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, is a form of internal martial arts, right? And uh, to make your body become so powerful, you have to use your mind. 
And you can't have a powerful body without a powerful mind. So that is a tells you about is in order to make your body move like a water, able to yield and redirect or make your body like a bamboo, right? Able to yield, redirect, you have to have the mind first. So you make your mind become body, body become your mind. So that kind of a gentle movement not only provide powerful way to engage in with our mind, but also make it suitable for people with all physical conditions. We know a lot of vulnerable populations and because of various health conditions, body abilities, and reluctance and unable to participate the conventional fitness programs because of injury or because of simply the kinesiophobia, right? The fear of the body get hurt by doing something. But Tai Chi movement is so gentle and so graceful that provides sense of comfort. Also, Tai Chi, if we make it adaptive, which means that we change the form of Tai Chi practice a little bit by using sitting form, by using standing form, or even in a wheelchair. And you're not only able to provide the participants with a sense of normalization. Normalization really means that, you know, regardless of my body conditions, I can move so beautifully and empowering not just my mind, but also my body as well. So that was the whole lessons I learned and through working with people with disabilities and people in the wheelchair and the people, you know, have those body injuries that prevent them to engage in other form of physical fitness programs. I love that. So let's talk about physicians, right? I love what you said earlier about how Tai Chi, because of the mind-body connection that is implicit to the practice, helps us to work with our own enemy within, right? And so for physicians, particularly in the last two years, but really generally, unfortunately, from medical education through their practice as professionals, there is so much external pressure for performance, perfection, that then gets translated into internal pressure. And there's just a lot of pressure and stress and stress responses that physicians are under more than ever now. And I'm hearing from more and more physicians in my practice as a coach who are saying, I'm crying uncle, right? I'm very resilient. We know physicians as a whole are more resilient than the general population, but at this point they need new tools for better being able to process their stress responses in a way that allows them to be resilient and to continue the practice of medicine. So a big part of what we do at Doc Working and our Doc Working Thrive program, and specifically a course within that program that is the stress course by Stress Pal, we focus on that idea of mindfulness and being able to process stress. And I know Tai Chi research has shown has the same benefits for managing stress-related anxiety as exercise. So why do you think Tai Chi is something that could be particularly helpful for physicians as they're in this state of being in 2022 because of the conditions in the last few years of practicing medicine? Well, you laid out so perfect, uh, you know, a background. And so gracefully, when I hear you and uh, almost like, uh, wow, and this is, you know, contemporary pictures and glories and the challenges that faces healthcare provider, especially physician. You know, physician is one of the most admirable, but also challenge occupation. And they're carried over by, you know, ordinary people, right? We are not Superman. And we all know how challenged that the physicians is those days. And the burnout rate is extremely high. And the emotional and mental distress caused by those burnout. And, you know, it's incredible. It's, I think I read studies as twice as the ordinary population, uh, other professions. I really admire the physician. Uh, it is a unique group of people and, you know, their job. And I know a lot of my students, and when they apply for medical school, ask them what you want to do. So try to help people. 
And then we know on the way there, Charlie helping people, they forgot about themselves. And as the data show, as you know, that depression, burnout, and really so high among physician population. And that is a really, really challenging reality. I think we all should come up way to help because without physician, we cannot have a good, well, a healthy society. In order to have a healthy society, we need to take care of our physician first. So now, why Tai Chi would be benefit to physician, just like Tai Chi would benefit for anybody? And what I see, the occupation physician is really unique because every day they try to really dealing with the problems that are so intrinsically and embedded into human life. And it is constantly figuration battle, try to find a way to improve our life. And overcoming is the key. So what I see at the veterans and uh, why I promote this program in the veteran population was from all the study done by other people is that, you know, humans, we have that kind of a warrior spirit, just like veterans or like physicians. You know, physicians are warriors, right? Every day they go there and they try to defeat the disease. They try to save lives. They try to overcome. Not just not help other people overcome in a way themselves become exhausted, right? And they're not just physically exhausted, but mentally exhausted. So the popularity of the complementary medicine modality, yoga, tai chi, all those things, is that it is able to provide us with a sense of recuperation, relaxation, sense of basically and actively engaging some kind of the mental shifting, right? And, you know, if our mind constantly confront with a particular social reality, which is intensified and challenges everywhere, difficulties, you know, our mind is not meant for that, right? Our mind, our mental qualities, even our body is made to live in the natural environment as hunters and gatherers, right? So now suddenly we have to deal with those compartmentalized, socialized, and medicalized reality. And not just our mind, our body could not take it either. So the great thing about Tai Chi is that this kind of movement oftentimes not only able to promote the sense of warrior spirit, but most importantly, it's really put our mind into a different environment, the nature environment. For example, you know, the flow, the water flow like a movement oftentimes remind us about water. And, you know, the metaphors, similes we use in Tai Chi program, such as, you know, stand like a tree and sit like a mountain and flow like water, you like a bamboo and bring our mind into that kind of environment, make us feel enriched, empowered, right? And just like, you know, when we got exhausted, you want to go on vacation. Oftentimes the vacation places, you know, in the mountains, the beaches, the nature environment, because those nature environment give us sense kind of, not just relaxation, but also empowerment. So for physician, that means they're working so hard, so many hours in the clinical settings, right? And the hospitals, dealing with patients. And this can be very, very exhausting. So therefore, I think a Tai Chi program or Tai Chi-like program, especially important for healthcare providers and physicians, because it not only provide them with a sense of you know, physical fitness, but most importantly, is another constructive way to engage in mental engagement, right? And through that engagement, we not only feel a sense of space, but also we constantly connected with the nature environment in which we evolved for thousands of years. I love that idea because we know the data is there that being in nature is calming to the nervous system is one of very effective ways for us to process 
our stress response to regulate, to complete that stress cycle instead of staying in that activated stress response. And I love also how you pointed out that even though there's so much strength or, you know, kind of that warrior spirit you described, almost superhuman at times for physicians, that doesn't mean they're meant to be in that mode all the time. And I think in some ways it's the curse of the highly capable, right? When you're used to being able to be in that level of strength for so long, you forget that we're meant to regulate and to ebb and flow in the amount of intensity and force and effort that we're putting forth in the world. And so for this to provide a modality to sort of change the channel, we know that mindfulness, meditation are vital long-term for ability to process the stress responses. I mean, I love the fact that Tai Chi has been called a moving meditation because a lot of my physician clients have a hard time just sitting still, right? Their brains, their bodies are used to being active. And so I like the idea of this being a way that they can get the benefits that are very important to change the channel in their brains from that intensity pressurized go, go, go mode and do it in a way that allows flow and motion and nature. It seems like it combines a lot of things into one. Do I have that right? Oh, yes, absolutely. You put it right there. And I think the other side of the coin is that oftentimes we think exercise is a treatment, right? It's intervention, it's a problem solver. And so once we do it that way, of course, we solve a problem, then we forgot about it, right? And we use it as some kind of a tool. When we need it, we use it. When we don't need it, we'll put it down. I think that can be dangerous, you know, especially for physicians, because like you said, you know, working extended hours, not by design, it's not by our choice, not by our biological, psychological, somehow that's our choice. No, and it's by social constructions and the social demand uh, requirement, right? So therefore, I mean, physicians' body going to be exhausted just like everybody else. Now, the way of Tai Chi, oftentimes, Tai Chi is not just exercise. You do it, you feel good. But also, it's a way of life. The way of life is really kind of give you always the wellnesses about yield and knowing your weaknesses, right? Knowing your vulnerabilities, able to yield before it is breaking down. So that is the whole idea of Tai Chi. You know, oftentimes people ask me, says, you know, why you like Tai Chi so much? I oftentimes say, you know, Tai Chi is the only martial arts I know you're getting better as you're getting older. Right. There's a sustainability to it. So I love that reminding us that this isn't this quick fix that you just need to jump into when it's convenient or when you're feeling really overwhelmed, but creating a practice that becomes sort of a necessary part of living a balanced and regulated lifestyle when there's a lot of external pressures. So finally, Dr. Guo, if somebody says, okay, well, this all sounds good, but I don't know anything about Tai Chi. How am I supposed to be able to figure this out if they're listening to this and saying, how can I integrate this in my life? How can I learn about it when I'm already feeling overwhelmed and it feels like one more thing would be hard to take on? What do you say to them about how they could start? This is a great question. That has been a myth. You know, the people say, oh, you need to find a good teacher. You need to invest a lot of time. That scares people because, like I said, applied page is really kind of understand, you know, modern lifestyle is completely different from Asian lifestyle. You know, we don't have six hours a day to practice meditation, Qigong or yoga, right? I mean, very few people have the luxury, but most of us have to work. So I would recommend is that really, you know, uh, just pick one or two movements, right? And there are a lot of great Tai Chi teachers everywhere. And just to go there and, uh, you know, learn a couple, two movements. And if you have time, you learn more. If you don't, just stick with the two movements and make it become part of your life pattern. You know, every day you find a fireman and just sit there or standing there and like meditation. And go through those movements and try to feel the idea behind the movement five minutes, 10 minutes. And that would work much, much effectively than you would spend two hours a week here and there. And I think that is the way to do it. You don't have to really kind of try to learn 
hundred A moves, you know, forty A moves. That you know really scares people away. And I think that's one of the challenges to all kinds of program in terms of sustainability. Right? People just don't have that much time. Yeah, I love that because we do have to lower the obstacle to entrance so that people can say, oh, this isn't another thing that I have to go work really hard, learn a ton about before I can even start doing it. And so positions, if you're listening to this and this seems familiar, do not let perfect be the enemy of good here, right? Go to YouTube and learn a couple of the moves or find an online teacher you can learn through by watching videos on your own schedule and begin and then let the practice grow with you as you begin to understand the benefits for your whole health and how it helps you to depressurize your life. So Dr. Zabin Guo, this has been really fun to think about, inspiring for us to challenge our brains and bodies with something that is so soothing and helpful and delivers so many benefits to our health and well-being, especially as it relates to lowering stress levels and having a practice that we get better at as we get older, which I think at this point in life, I'm always appreciating those opportunities <laughs> for things that I can continue to do into the long haul. So thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And thanks to all our listeners. Make sure you tell your friends and colleagues about all the great conversations we have here and go right now to docworking.com to find out about Doc Working Thrive, the program that can help you lower your stress and live a better life, both at work and at home. Until next time, I'm Jill Farmer. I'm Amanda Taran, producer of Doc Working, the Whole Physician podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and head over to docworking.com to see all we have to offer.